Should you put down that big bowl of dark leafy greens? Should you just put away the spinach and never ever look back? See, if we're looking at the world of oxalates and how oxalates affect our body and affect our mineral absorption, then this is a viable consideration. We really do need to look at this. So in this video, I hope to give you a clear understanding of whether or not you should avoid foods that are high in oxalates. And in order to be able to give you that answer, I have to be able to describe what oxalates are. So we'll go into some pretty good detail, but not boring detail, what oxalates are and why there's such a big stink about them right now, especially throughout the keto and even the carnivore community. But first, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, then hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. And if you haven't already, please check out Thrive Market. So Thrive Market makes it so that you can get your groceries and get your keto groceries, your fasting goods, all in one spot. They're an online grocery store. And I've been able to assemble my keto box and my fasting box, so anyone that watches my videos can get the grocery items that I choose but get them delivered right to your doorstep. So literally don't have to go to the grocery store and pick out things that I talk about. You can just get them through Thrive and they'll show up right at your doorstep and it's gonna cost less money than it would at the grocery store. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about foods, if you should be avoiding them or, or, or what all this chaos is about. So first of all, oxalates are also known as oxalic acid. Okay, they're found in all kinds of plants. And the whole purpose of oxalic acid is to be an anti-nutrient. Okay, now the term anti-nutrient sounds terrible, and yeah, it is kind of terrible, but only if it's in huge amounts. You see, anti-nutrients make it so that minerals and various vitamins and things in your body get chelated. So essentially, the reason that oxalates are supposedly so bad is because they come into our system and they chelate the minerals in our body and they remove them from the body when we go to the bathroom. Okay, so it's bad, right? We don't want that to happen. But some things that we have to consider are the fact that our liver actually creates oxalates on its own. So it's kind of odd. It stirs up a lot of interesting thought. Why would we produce oxalates? Well, we probably produce oxalates to a small degree to help us out with detoxification and help get rid of excess minerals that we don't need and things like that. But another thing that's interesting is vitamin C actually converts into oxalate to some degree as well. So there are some things, even foods that aren't high in oxalates can ultimately have an oxalate-like effect within the body. Now, I know oxalate this, oxalate that, oxalate a little, so much oxalate. Okay, what am I actually talking about? Like, what, what's going on inside your body with this? Well, so basically, oxalate comes in and it binds to whatever minerals it can find. Okay, so sometimes it binds to sodium, and this makes an oxalate salt or a sodium oxalate salt. Sometimes it binds to potassium, makes a potassium oxalate salt. Sometimes it binds to magnesium, sometimes it even binds to calcium, makes a calcium oxalate salt. Once they bind to a mineral, it's called an oxalate salt. The biggest problem that we see with oxalates is gonna be the formation of kidney stones, right? Okay, because salt oxalate or potassium oxalate salts, those are water soluble. Those can get kind of flushed away and broken down, but calcium and the calcium oxalate salts, those are not very water soluble. They get really hard packed. And what happens is when the body tries to flush that out and it goes through the kidneys, it gets clogged up in the kidneys. So kidney stones are the biggest issue. 80% of the kidney stones are a result of oxalates. But that's a whole separate situation. Does that mean that you should be avoiding oxalates altogether and not be eating your dark leafy greens? I mean, every veggie that has kind of a bitter taste is generally high in oxalates. So what do you do? Well, I think the simplest thing is to say everything in moderation, including moderation, right? You just always just wanna make sure you're not going overboard on everything. But we also do have to look at the big picture, okay? Within our gut, we have a plethora of different minerals. And a lot of times, we have way too much in the way of iron. See, iron causes a lot of problems. And if we have something that's coming in and able to chelate the excess iron, even if it does chelate some of the other minerals too, it actually allows those other minerals to proliferate in other ways. Okay, for example, if you think of iron, Iron, when it's left outside, it rusts, right? It oxidizes. Iron is probably one of the biggest drivers for oxidative stress within our gut. That oxidative stress within our gut is probably much more damaging than the oxalate effect of potentially zapping some of our minerals. So what I'm trying to say here is that the chelation effect could actually be a good thing. That could also be a wraparound reason why our liver produces oxalates in the first place, to help chelate some of what is in excess. Now what's kind of ironic, or should I say iron, ironic, is spinach is super high in iron, right? But spinach is also very high in oxalates. Could it be that the iron has been chelated inside the spinach and that's kind of what's already happening? It's already had that chelation effect? So the point is, is that 
Oxalates may chelate, but they probably chelate what's in most abundance, which is going to be iron, which therefore frees up more copper and frees up more zinc to actually do the job, because those are minerals that don't chelate as easy. So anyway, that's just kind of a separate thing. But another thing that you can be paying attention to is not necessarily limiting your oxalate intake, but focusing more so on the diversity of your gut microbiome. You see, studies have shown that your gut microbiome plays a big role in oxalate breakdown. So studies have shown that individuals were much more likely to develop kidney stones if they had a less diverse gut microbiome. Now, one thing that we do know from other studies and other videos that I've done is that the different kinds of foods that you eat ultimately create a more diverse gut microbiome. If you do eat a lot of the same things over and over again, then you develop sort of pinnacle microbiomes for those foods and you don't get the diversity that you need. The diversity might make it so that you can actually break down the oxalates because believe it or not, we do break down oxalates. Like lactobacillus, one of the main bacteria within our gut, has specific things that break down oxalates. For example, we've got formal coenzyme A transferase. Then we've also got oxidal coenzyme A carboxylase. These are the main things that break down, of course, the oxalates within our gut. So I'm not saying that everyone that says to avoid oxalates is wrong. By no means are they wrong, okay? We do wanna probably limit them. But what we need to focus more on is supporting our gut bacteria, getting the good prebiotics in. So perhaps a good way to start is if you want the veggies that are high in oxalates, maybe go this, the pickled route. That way you can actually get them so they're already fermented a little bit more. Okay, so this isn't all just about going fermented. I'm just saying that if you're going to consume things that are high in oxalates, if you start out with a fermented process, then you run less risk of them having the oxalate chelation effect in your body. Okay, I've never seen pickled spinach before, but you could look up all kinds of different high oxalate veggies that you can get in pickled form. So are oxalates bad? Well, I wouldn't say they're bad. They're just doing their job. They have a natural inherent poison within them that makes it so that we don't consume a ton of them. It doesn't mean that it's killing us. You know what else is killing us that has a little bit of poison in it? Alcohol, okay? But you don't see massive campaigns against alcohol like you do against oxalates. The point is our body can handle things in moderation. And to some degree, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. It's not all about death by a thousand cuts all the time. Our body is resilient. So maybe we look at things in moderation. We also understand the loopholes that we can do to make sure we get the most out of nature's pretty marvelous ways of making the world work. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, I'll see you in the next one.